Hey, what is up guys? Footy Manager TV here, and I've got another Arsenal Let's Play for you. And also, I was just uh, wondering about the Australia, uh, if you want to see friendly matches or not, if you just want to see the competitive matches, Asian Cup about 130 days away. It's going to be in January, so uh, leave your comments if you want to see that. It's fairly exciting for me, uh, being from Australia, so I'll be a bit into that. And yeah, but actually, like, if you don't want to see it, like, if you don't really care about it, and not so much, I might as well resign from the position, because uh, sometimes I don't feel like choosing my national squads and that, and if you don't really care about it, like a national team too much, I'll just resign and focus on Arsenal, so, yeah, leave your comments if you just want me to focus on Arsenal, or if you think uh, managing Australia will be a good thing, like, I'm not really sure, because uh, most of my viewers are from the UK, so I'm not really sure if people would really care about it, and they might get bored uh, throughout that, uh, yeah, around that time, and this is supposed to, this is just like an Arsenal Let's Play, and yeah, just leave your comments on that, I thought I'd just talk about that for now, but now moving into, it's the Champions League uh, group stage draw, you know, uh, we're the reigning champion, so I'll love to retain my crown, and let's see who we'll get grouped against, and usually the group stage is fairly easy for me, so it shouldn't matter, but who knows, um, yeah, this first part here, obviously, is nothing to worry about, obviously the big teams here, but some uh, pretty big teams in the second draw is also interesting. Inter and Bayern Munich in the same group. That will be a very solid. Porto and Tottenham, they're like sort of lower teams uh, compared to other ones. Barcelona and Juve. And let's see who we have a chance. We've got Benfica, Atletico Madrid, Shakhtar, Leverkusen or Man City. Obviously Man City won't be uh, in for us. So Shakhtar, if we could get Shakhtar, that, that's probably the best team. Shakhtar or Benfica. Or Leverkusen as well. Atletico is probably a bit better. But anyway, who do we get? Atletico Madrid, probably the hardest team out of all of those. Um, obviously, we can't get Manchester City. But anyway, uh, just draw the rest here. Real Madrid, of course, lucky. Uh, I have a feeling we'll face them into the finals. Just got to see. And anyway, this is where the easier teams come. Who's our options? If we get Dortmund, that will be tough if we get Dortmund. And also, selling Giroud to Galatasaray, you'll see that. Um... Getting Basel or Copenhagen or even Anderlecht as well. Any of those team I'll be happy with. And who do we get? Anderlecht. Yep, happy with that. Uh, yeah, we draw the rest. And again, uh, really poor teams here. Verde Bremen. Yeah, Ver either Verde and Bremen. Again, Celtic. We played against them last time. Or in my Schalke one, I think it is. But yeah, any of these teams should be fairly easy for to us to beat, pretty much. But yeah, anyone aside from Verde Bremen, we should beat quite easily, to be honest. Uh, Rapid Wien or Panathinaikos would be perfect to get them or RZ. Let's see who do we get. Ooh, Werder Bremen. They're, I'm not really sure if they're who like they have right now uh, with a couple seasons in. But yeah, if you look at their team, it's not amazing. Uh, they got Ishak. He's a very good striker or high valued for a younger striker. Very good physically. I say he's definitely a danger to watch out. But anyone else really is not amazing if you look at their like ratings. But they got Algiro Alia. He's an all right player. Uh, Anutovic. Uh, I'm just looking at their high-rated players, but their team isn't amazing like compared to our team, but there's still someone to look out for. And also a guy we just signed, another regen, uh, Ian Scully, or Ian Scully, uh, from uh, Roma, I believe he was, for $1.8 million on approach to sign as an 18-year-old. Last season had 10 appearances and did really, really good for a defender uh, just coming in with a regen or as a regen, a 7.36 rating. So uh, that's pretty good. For, well, he would have been 17, and he's touted as the next Cannavaro. So uh, promising signs there had to be the next Cannavaro. Uh, anyway, he's got 17 jumping, obviously, his key attribute, and hopefully he can go out on loan. He's wanted by 16 clubs, so now, like, no doubt he's got that potential. But anyway, uh, we got the Super Cup, but I'll show you the previous results in the Premier League. We won our first two. Obviously, the Wolves won. We dominated... Uh, fairly, but the next one against Blackburn was a bit interesting. Uh, we won 6-3. Uh, heaps of goals in that match. Falcao scoring twice. Oxlade Chamberlain scoring as well. Walcott getting injured, getting a knock there, but he seems to be okay. And also Rafael Varane. He's he's been a very good player for me. A fantastic signing last season from Real Madrid. Fantastic defender. Can play defensive mid if needed. And yeah, he's just fantastic. 21 years old. Still going to keep improving. Uh, but yeah, we got the Super Cup final against Olympic Lyonnais. So. Hopefully we can get a win here and let's add another trophy to my trophy cabinet. And yeah, let's just go straight into the match and hopefully can pick up a win at the neutral venue, of course. And yeah, of course, like I said, I'm going to sell Giroud if you see what happens here. As you can see, it was a fairly easy group at Let's Go Madrid, hardest team. I'll take that any day. See word of Bremen at the other team and elect. We got them actually in the third one. But anyway, I'm um, sending out on loan goal. If you see in the transfer center, 
and yeah, let's just accept all of this. Uh, I'm just going to accept all the on loans because they're also some in the Premier League, some in the Championship. Doesn't really matter. I'll just accept them all because yeah, it takes too much time to go through them all specifically. And yeah, Capital One Cup draw again. Thirty-two teams. I'll just draw it like that. And we play against Coventry at home. That should be a win. I might look to play some younger players. Uh, someone suggested that last time. If I play some reserve players or like youth prospects in that, I might think about doing that. Like, leave your comments if you want to see that. And also with my matches, I'm just going to go back to 2D. Like I've seen people suggest uh, that they want the 2D gameplay. So. Uh, instead of the 3D, for I thought people like 3D more, and also 2D is the videos are less size for me, so I can upload it quicker. So it might be best for all parties concerned. Again, with the Australian team, like here, like when I'm doing commentary now, like I don't really feel like uh, picking my team. Like I just want to go confirm there. So that sort of leads me towards just resigning because I sort of thought I wanted to do it, but when I because when I get focused in Arsenal, that's all I want to focus on. So I may think about resigning from the Australia Post. Uh, because, yeah, I don't like managing two at the same time. I thought, like, I could have got into it, but, yeah, I don't... That sort of makes me less wanting to play it for whatever reason. Like, that's how I get bored of it. But, anyway, uh, moving on. As you can see, I just see all this thing. I don't I don't like seeing all this international stuff, so I may actually resign from that and before the friendly matches because, yeah, I just want to focus on Arsenal. So, um, yeah, it's just going to make it easier, and I'm sure most people would agree. If some people from Australia watch the videos... And they want to see how I do it. Like, I don't really... It doesn't suit, like, how I play. I don't like managing two at the same time because then I get... Yeah, it really gets conflicted. Like, I would rather start one, like, specifically, just Australia, no club. But, yeah, that's not the case. So, yeah, I'm probably just going to resign from that after I play this match. But, anyway, um, moving into our match against Leon, we should really be winning this. They don't have, like, a team that they used to have when they used to be challenging. Uh, obviously, a dominant French team. But now, like, PSG is obviously the best team. Put Ramsey in there, the centre mid. Uh, Kusuke Honda, he's going to be out. He can't fit in there. Uh, we'll just bring in another attacking player. Let's bring on Eduardo Salvio. Also, Eitel on loan to a Spanish team, Atletico Madrid. I'm not sure if he's allowed to play against us, but uh, yeah, he's a super player. I reckon we can bring him in next season. He's going to be good enough. Of course, if you check out his history, um, there he, I sent him out on loan to Betis, and obviously a lower-rated team than Atletico, but now Atletico, a bigger team, and if he can get consistent performances, he could be... He could turn into a very, very good defender. He's not slow. Oh, of course, he's touted as the next Gerard Piquet, as you can see there. So with that, he's uh, no doubt has the potential to be someone fantastic and to replace the Murder Sackers and the Kashalnis and all those older players we have. And Vermeulen, you know, I've been saying, hasn't been playing very well. So I'm going to try him at left back, see if he does well. But Wilshere is a bit injured right there. So um, who can we bring in? Itor. If we can actually bring him in, that's a bit weird. Can we actually choose? If he's here being able to choose. That surely cannot be correct. That cannot be correct. Uh, how is he able to choose? But yeah, I'm, I think I'm just going to leave him out. I'm not sure why he's able to put in the team. But anyway, actually, I'm going to put Wallace in instead of David e. Santon because... Uh, what am I doing there? Uh, yeah, Lucina Traore, put him back in. And yeah, who do I take out from here? Yeah, David e. Santon, just keep his energy up and that kind of thing. And yeah, we have a match coming up and... I just want to see if anyone else is a better option. But look, Sarabia, 8.85 rating so far. has been dominant. Same with Falcao, Walcott. Um, yeah, this is the perfect team to go with, in my opinion. Like, everyone's just doing fantastic. So I think I should just leave it as is and go into a match. Varane, yeah, Murdersaka dominating. Kishalny on the right. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to put Korshi. I haven't really given him a chance. I've just been playing Kishalny for a more defensive option. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a team to go into... So, yeah, uh, let's get into it right now. There's our team, and we're going to the match, and would love to pick up another trophy, uh, like I said before, to add to my trophy cabinets. And, yeah, as I said, I'm playing in the 2D. And if you look at their team here, it's nothing fantastic. Got Haral, Yutaka as their strikers. Midfield, nothing amazing. Gonalons, uh, Fafana, Navio, uh, Michel Bastos. Defense, Monzon, Kone, Lovren. This guy, whoever he is, Magatuka. Or Mangatuka. He's a region. Okay, he looks not bad, um... Yeah, I don't want to worry for that. I'll focus on my regen scouting for a bit later. And, yeah, they're okay defenders, I guess. Carrizo, I'm not sure if he's a good, like, really solid. Uh, yeah, I suppose he's okay. He's eccentric, or eccentric, I should say, and uh, not really good decisions. With eccentric goalkeepers, they need good decisions, so hopefully can make a mistake. And, yeah, um, hopefully that could result in a win to us in this competition. So, of course, I'm not going to get as, like, as excited as the Champions League because it's not as important, obviously, but it's always good to win. And yeah, just with the strikers, this is what I'll do to them. I just basically do all the opposition instructions apart from hard tackling. 
and that usually does well for this formation that I'm currently using. Um, it's been doing well so far, the first two wins in the Premier League, and like I said, I'm first right now, so I'm doing well. I've won the first two matches and hopefully can continue on with that. Uh, last season was pretty bad compared to the first season, but now you can see with the players' ratings, we're really start, starting to dominate. Sarabia becoming the player I want him to be. And yeah, every not everyone, but most of our players seem... Look at all the superb ratings there, for, like, all our attacking players. And Sarabia, he's just going to dominate opponents now. So hopefully people do enjoy this 2D gameplay because um, I've been people... Um, I've seen more people saying they like the 2D gameplay than more people saying that they like the 3D. So, and it's good for me as well because I can the videos are a smaller size and I can render them quicker and upload them quicker. So it's good for all parties concerned. But Sarabia again, he's just uh, he's finally into the third season, becoming the player that I wanted him to be maybe last season. And that's yeah, that's the difference. But you're just going to see him dominate. Well, I hope so anyway. And just continuing on with his really, really good form. Varane, only 21 still. That's crazy. He's going to still improve. Uh, Walcott, he's doing well, like his first season. So hopefully he can continue on also. Again, just this slow passing approach. Murder Saka, you've got to be careful not to give the ball away and maybe not overplay this short passing play. But anyway, uh, Walcott should get past his man there. Does put the cross in. Falcao scores a goal. And yeah, hopefully it can be like just continue on this for the whole season. Like I'm not expected. Like I am actually expecting my team to win this match. Like I'll be surprised if I lost. That's what I was gonna say. I'll be really surprised if I lost this match uh, with our recent form. Uh, we've got super players now. They're all gelling together. I haven't really made so many first team signings. I suppose the free transfer they had a chance there, but Varane uh, well cleared off the line there. And yeah, Varane he's just gonna keep developing into a good centre back. Ideally, he's gonna be partnered with. One of our region centre backs coming through. We've got quite a few of them, like four or five, good enough. Like they have the potential to be a leading Premier League player into the future. So, um, yeah, we've got options. Obviously, I'm not going to keep them all. Like I say, I buy them cheap to make profit. And once they're like at their peak, at their prime, I sell them on for profit. Like who's not my first choice players? And then you'll see my bank balance gradually, gradually, I should say, gradually increasing. And yeah, it's a very good way. You'll see that, like starting from now and into next season, that's when I'm going to start to sell uh, some of these players. But Harao, a chance, but Chesney, nothing gets past this lad right here. He's he's just a fantastic keeper, and he's still fairly young. I know I keep saying it like every season, but he's still young for a keeper. Like he's still got like maybe 10 years in him. Like goalkeepers can play, I don't know, you can, goalkeepers in real life, um, they can play up to 40. Like if they just maintain that level, if they maintain their fitness, that's all they need pretty much. Because they don't really decline in their technical attributes, it's just they got to keep their self fit and they can play um, like into their forties. So yeah, hope. But ideally, uh, we, you don't forget we have Har yeah Harvey Darby. He's coming through. Uh, but really, uh, Chesney has heaps of time left to play. Like I said, uh, anyway, I'll just ask the guys to not get complacent. And yeah, another motivating team talk to gain the focus. Some players seeming motivated. Some players getting their focus up, which is always good because. We're still only winning by that solitary goal. So we've got to maintain our performance, this level of performance, and not really slack off, even though this isn't as important as maybe other competitions. But like I said, it's always good to win an extra competition, get that extra cash. And also, like I said, I'm selling Giroud for about $16 million to Galatasaray. Of course, if the deal does go through, um, you will get that extra money. And like I said, that's how we're going to maintain that money because we signed, uh, what's his name again? Uh, there is Lucina Traore. Save me from forgetting his name. There, um, we signed him for for uh, yeah for a free. So he's basically replacing uh, Giroud, and that's how you make the extra money, making six million right there. But here, Garmash, uh, he's going down a run on the left wing. Not really his game, but he's a decent player now, developing well. Uh, Falcao almost scored, but it goes back to Garmash, and but I think that's offside. But yeah, really, like it says there, Falcao should have scored. Yeah, I think I skipped there a bit because I paused it because I've got this new mic that just goes in my ear with no, like, headset. It's just, like, a mic by itself. Or it's, like, um, what is the word? Okay, I can't find the... Yeah, it's hand-free. That's what you're going to say. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes it feels like it's almost coming out. But anyway, uh, there's Andre Ayu. I give him a rest. Let's bring in Bernard. Let's see how he goes as centre mid, but I can't really play there as much as Sarabia. I'll put Sarabia in there. Hopefully can do well. Uh, he's been assaulted. I might as well just show you Sarabia how... Uh, the reason why he's dominating, look at his attributes right there. I told you I needed someone to really uh, challenge Hazar from Chelsea because he becomes into a fantastic player. And yeah, he's really similar to him, but hopefully can he's still he's a bit younger than Hazar, so ho hopefully he can improve. And don't forget, he's a Real Madrid. He started at Real Madrid, so uh, he's got he's still got that very good attributes. Maybe Falcao, 
Um, because he missed that chance, might be losing confidence. But Lucina Traore, got to give him a chance. Um, he's like, at, at least he's, to me, he's as good as Giroud, in my opinion. And he's a bit faster, a little bit better balance. That started at 15, if you remember. Now it's gone up to 16. Like, he's just developing. Well. Like, he's still 24. Uh, he was 23 when he joined. Um, he played in the World Cup for Ivory Coast, scored some goals, as you can see here, for International. Uh, he was fairly good, 7.65 rating at the World Cup. Uh, launched them into the knockout stages into the World Cup and has been fantastic. He was fantastic, and that really helped. It, like, we signed him before that, so, yeah, I was really happy with that. And, yeah, I think he, he can be the rotation option. Uh, yeah, basically replacing Giroud, and like I said, making that extra 16 million uh, for us. So here, who would be the next ideal option to take, or who needs some game time? What? Yeah, I think Wallace, he's our next option. And again, I want to show a lot of info in my career, so you'll actually feel like you know a lot of things happening, apart from just playing the match, and I'm not showing you anything. And yeah, he has, doesn't look amazing right now, but hopefully he can just gradually improve. He's still 20, so uh, yeah, hopefully he can improve defensively more so, that's what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, um, I'll probably put him on the left side, he can play both sides, which is very good, and he's good on both feet, so uh, that allows him to uh, even... I know some players can play um, like both sides, but some are not good on both feet. Some are weak on one of the their feet, of course. And, yeah, that's the good thing about Wallace. And, as I said, he's still 20, so he still has heaps of time to improve. But I, he's good physically. Like, he's got okay pace and strength and that kind of thing. But I'm going to work on his defensive abilities uh, because if I can do that, if he's tackling, marking, heading, and all that stuff gets good, he could be a super option for us. You know, we already got other good fullbacks. You got Santon on the left side and of course Korchi on the right side and even Kishalny for a more defensive option. Korchi, of course, the more attacking option uh, to get up the field and yeah, or get up the pitch as it's called in football. Um, pitch is what we call in my sport, main sport in Australia. Uh, that's what we call field, AFL field. Yep. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, we get the win here 1-0. Uh, really not dominating as I expected. But we still, we still won 1-0. And it seemed like we dominated. We controlled the match. And Leon never really uh, looked like scoring a goal. And just got to be happy with that. Congratulations to the team. Uh, per Mertesacker, again, he's probably a, he's like our oldest centre-back. But he just continues uh, just to put out so much good performance. Look at his defending attributes. If I go here, if I go defensive roles uh, for a central defender, just put defend. And very good marking, all of that. Look at it. Composure and concentration is 20. Jumping 20. Uh, positioning 19, and he's still only, oh, I say only 29, but to me that means he can play at least for two more seasons, and I'm not sure how much more seasons they'll do of this, but um, yeah, he's just dominating, he's, uh, actually he's only improving, if you look at his attributes, it, or his average rating, it just keeps going up, so um, yeah, he could at least play for two or three more seasons, and we're going to have younger players coming through, which is, it's fantastic, because the pressure is on him to uh, keep performing, and I said like, in my first season or second season, I said Murdersack is probably the best uh, defender in the great in the game, I should say, and he's really putting, he's like confirming my uh, comments right there, I know some people won't say it because he's pace, but he's actually, if I'll show you again, his pace is actually 14, obviously the other, like you know in FIFA, he's really slow, but uh, where are we, where's Murdersacker again, here, uh, where are, yeah, his pace is actually 14, that's not bad for a slow defender, as people like to call him with his agility and acceleration, so 14 pace, it sort of makes up for the other low physical uh, pace attributes, so that's alright in my opinion, uh, anyway, we get that extra money for winning, winning the Super Cup, adding another trophy uh, to my cabinet. As you can see, we continue the Arsenal t tradition right there. It says, the fans of Arsenal are overjoyed that I have, that me and my players have continued the team's proud tradition by winning the UEFA Super Cup. Uh, a, spo a spokesperson for the official supporters club said that I had done the team proud by winning the trophy. Of course, it's not the most big trophy to win, but of course, it's at least a trophy, and uh, something that goes down on my record, nonetheless, so that's very good, Traore making the debut, and I'll slowly start to introduce him more, some more, like if Falcao is in scoring, or something like that, as you can see for Australia, I'm probably going to, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, because like I showed you before, like when I'm doing a video, like I can't be bothered with submitting the squad, and maybe there's some players I want to put in that aren't in, and yeah, it's probably too much work, and it'll make the videos take longer, so I'm more than likely going to resign, unless there's some outstanding comments that want me to stay, but yeah, anyway, uh, that's it for now, please leave a like if you want more of this Arsenal Let's Play, and I'll see you guys next time.